viral infection, it's not bacteria, but you could have colored phlegm. So when we see phlegm, it's mycobacterium? No, when you see colored phlegm where there's a bacteria isolated, then it's mycobacterium. All right, uh, but I doubt if I ever use that one. There's two. Endospore positive, what else? If you remember, you've got to have rods. And empty holes. Or green ovals. All those things tell you endospore positive. What can tell you endospore negative? Red rods. No mention of holes. Um, pink rods. Uh, pink coxie. Remember, coxie can't have endospores. All of those are endonegative. Ah, here's one I use a lot. Pink rods with green dots. That's dye debris, not green oval. Oh, back to KIA. If I don't mention, if I say the KIA or the dioxin tube had uh, red and black, or if I say had two colors, red and yellow, and I don't mention black, that means it's negative for hydrogen sulfide. If I don't mention the color in the tube, and I'm talking about KIA, that means it's negative for hydrogen sulfide. Uh, anyone have any questions about these? Okay, let's talk about nitrate. Nitrate test is important on a gram positive. And this one's not that tricky if you know the test, and since you've done it, you should know it. Nitrate broth, and remember it can also be called nitrite broth, and it can also be called the nitratase. And finally, the test where red or pink is both positive and negative. Remember, if you inoculate it and for seven days, and here you have your little broth and it's all cloudy, and you add reagent A plus B, and you mix, and it's red, it's positive for nitrate, nitrite, nitratase. But if it's colorless, and you add zinc, and then it's red or pink, it really was negative. And if it's still colorless, but you have a bubble, it's positive. So this is kind of complicated. You have to, if I say A plus B plus zinc equal red, it's negative. If I say A plus B and it's red, it's positive. If I say A plus B plus zinc and a bubble, it's positive. And it's red, right? Or A plus B plus, plus zinc. zinc and a bubble would not be red. Colorless. <coughs> Colorless and a bubble. To get to reading the bubble, it has to be colorless on every previous step. And any time on any of these steps, when it's pink or red, you're done. That's the answer. You don't move to the next step. So if it's red here, you don't add zinc or look at the bubble. If it's red here, you don't look at the bubble. Question about the nitrate test. Yeah. So if it's colorless for zinc, uh, you look for a bubble. You look for the bubble. If there is no bubble, the result is inconclusive. Do it again. 
Yes, ma'am. Bubble before pink, um, still positive. Before pink, uh, when you add the. You don't look for a bubble if there's pink anywhere. The only time you ever look at a for a bubble is if it's been colorless through two previous steps. Yes. So just to make sure I understand, so reagent only A plus B equals red and positive. A plus B is red, means it's positive. Right, okay. A plus B plus zinc is negative. Yes, if it's red. If it's red, not colorless. No, if it's colorless, you look for the bubble. Okay, and then A plus Now what if you don't find a bubble? It's not negative, it's inconclusive. Okay, and then A plus B plus C plus a bubble is colorless, and that means positive. Positive. Any other questions about nitrate? It's a little tricky, but it's not bad. Actually, it really as hard as the other ones. Uh, let's see. So the catalase and casein are the only other things we need on the gram positive side of the chart. So let's look at catalase. And I usually hide that one by saying the slant done on an old, I mean the test done on an old slant. So test on an old slant. Or the test done on, clean, on, a, on a clean slide. Or the test that uses hydrogen peroxide. Or the test that bubbles or fizzes. Is fizzes I E S or E S? E S. I C S? Yes. Alright, so all those are misleaders for the catalase test. Uh, let's see. And of course the opposite would be no bubbles. Uh, no bubbles would be negative on the catalase. How else could you determine a catalase result? If it grew in a candle jar, or a carbon dioxide incubator, it is most likely catalase negative. Those are obligate anaerobes usually. Another way to detect obligate anaerobes is anytime I say it grew slowly. Very slow. Growing very slow is usually an anaerobe or mycobacterium. Why would mycobacterium grow slow? Remember, microbes have to get poop out and get nutrients in. How do you do that through a six foot layer of fat? very slowly. Okay, is there any other way anyone has seen catalase? Okay, so that leads us to nine casein. Casein test, okay, it can be called the milk test. Milk plate. Um, the really just the milk plate or the skim milk plate. What are the two tests that look for casein or skim milk auger? Yep, but skim milk auger is the trusted one. Skim milk auger plate. And remember, it can also be called casease. That is the one you trust if two of them contradict. The other one, of course, is litmus milk. Did we leave it off the lactose test? That would have made number seven. No, we put lactose. I had it on the lactose list? Okay. Yes, sir. But makes you did. Okay, so let's look at litmus milk. 
it's a liquid and it has azolitman pH indicator in it and that pH indicator can be purple <coughs> or blue and that means it's alkaline and lactose negative. If that litmus milk turns pink or white, it means lactose positive. So we're talking about the milk in here, the color of the milky fluid. If it's pink or white, it's positive for lactose. If it's purple or blue, it's negative. What if the tube has separated into a clearish fluid and a turd. Oh, I mean a curd. Then what color is that clearless fluid? If it's pink, it's positive for lactose. If it's blue or purple, It's negative for lactose. And this fluid is called whey. And whenever you see whey, it means casein positive. You don't really look for the turd, you look for the whey. And I use the word whey a lot because people don't know what it means. So the little girl in the nursery rhyme was sitting down eating her curds and whey. She was eating cottage cheese. Yes? So if it's pink or... Any sort of pink or white liquid in here, it's lactose positive. If the liquid has gone from being milky to being clear, it's casein positive. If it stayed like milk, so like you made strawberry milk by doing the strawberry quick in it, and that would be lactose positive casein negative because it would still remain milky. There would be no way. Why, why, way? No way, man. Yeah, what's your wine, little pump? I knew I'd get her! <laughs> I feel so much better now. I got up at 6 in the morning and I was here till God knows how much last night and I got to say, what's your whiny little problem? <laughs> you make a great couple. I mean, two really uh, hyper uh, uh, schizophrenics need serious medication. Alright, just kidding. Prozac, by the way, will help a lot. But blah, 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 blah. What? Yes, it's the better test. If you take milk and pour it in auger, it will look like solidified milk. It will look like white milk that's turned into a gel. And if, if your bacteria around the growth, but not directly under it, around the growth removes the white, in milk, the white in milk is casein. So, if you knock the white out of somebody, you knock the casein out of them. So, clearing around the microbial growth will be casein positive, and compared to the casein. But no clearing is casein negative, or remains milk, which is casein negative. And compared to the casein test, skim milk is better. Oh, you mean compared to lipid milk? Litmus milk is a crappy test of any type. Uh, I would only use a litmus milk result if, it was, if I got nothing else to use. This is a horrible test. By the way, if it's green, it's pseudomonas. If your litmus milk turns green, your microbe genus is pseudomonas. Pseudomonas makes a water-soluble green pigment that diffuses through everything it's in. So there's three casein tests. Nope. Two. 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 Two.
All right, so that's everything. Can anyone see anything else on the gram positive side that you might need to know something about? <laughs> Moving boringly to the other side, the gram negative, we're going to start with endol. And this one I have a whole bunch of ways of hiding it. First of all, let's start, start with MVIC. The test that determines pollution of water. I'll say the test that's used to separate uh, polluted water from clean water. That's MVIC. And I will always give you a number, something like plus four, plus three minus one, minus four, minus three, plus one, minus two, plus one, minus one. All of these will always add up to four, and that would, if plus four would mean all of these are positive, indole, methyl red, Volks, Proskauer, citrate. Plus three would mean the first three are positive and the last one's negative. Minus four would mean they're all negative. Plus three, minus one would be that. Plus two, minus one, plus one, oops, plus one, minus one would be the bottom. So I can give you a lot of information uh, to use on this if I use MVIC. If it's uh, uh, negative, negative, positive, positive, that, that means... Enterobacter. Enterobacteria. And then if it's positive, positive, negative, negative, it's... Usually escherichia. Okay. But not always. The other tests will tell you, too. All right. So, oh, if I give you an MVIC, and it has a result, in other words, one of them is positive, any one of them is gram negative, because you would only run an MVIC on a gram negative. Yeah? On the second to last one, it reminds me plus one, but then you go plus, 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 right? Huh? This one? No, no, the second to last one. So shouldn't it be negative minus yeah. minus? Dyslexia. Yeah. What did you say, if one of these tests is positive, then it's gram negative? Right. You wouldn't run an MVIC on anything but a gram-negative rod. Why do you care if you find a gram-positive rod in your water? You don't care. You wouldn't run the MVIC. Uh, what else? How else? Um, oh, don't forget, if I say the test that detects pollution is plus four and the three uh, important draws are plus two minus one, that would be... The first one would be about Invic, and the next one would be about glucose, lactose, and mannitol. So the three important carbohydrate broths are always in this order, glucose, lactose, mannitol. All right, uh, let's go on with Indole. The brown broth. that could turn bloody red. This is the only one when it turns red, it looks exactly like you cut your finger and bled in it. Uh, this is also uh, a broth that turns green. Of course, that's the negative, this is the positive. Uh, this is triptone broth. <coughs> this is tryptophanase. This is uh, tri tryptophane. This is the amino acid in it. Uh, what else? Uh, ah, the broth that's broken into a detectable product and pyruvate. Remember, if on your on your cards it says the triptone of broth is called indole, and it 
it is to see whether or not your microbe has the biochemical pathway can, that allows it to break the amino acid tryptophan into indole and pyruvate. And indole is detected by what reagent? Covax. Which is carcinogenic. What does that mean? If you eat it, rub it all over yourself, you get a third eye or an extra finger or something like that. Not really, but awful. It does cause cancer if you drink it or rub it all over yourself. I'm thinking of a couple of you that I want to rub it on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you said it turns green, it's negative. Say what now? Uh, if the brown turns green, it's negative. Right. But I know there's a question where it says it just stays brown, so that's considered negative as well. Anything but red. And remember, uh, like whenever you do these tests, I've seen people doing the test, and they get confused because it turns orangey red or a light pink. Remember, anything from what it was before is a color change, and in micro, orangey red, red, pink, and dark red are all considered red. So on your methyl red test, if, it, if you add your methyl red reagent and it turns orangey red, that's red. And the other color is brown, doesn't change. Okay, anything else about indole? Yeah. Oh, is it? So am I going to get cancer if I got my fingers in lab? Nope. It takes repeated exposure over years. Oh, you were just scratching? Okay. This one? Oh, detect, detectable. Uh, all right. This, your micro breaks the tryptophan into a detectable product plus, plus pyruvate. The detectable product would be in the symbol. This one? Tryptophan. Tryptophan. Then tryptophanase. Then tryptophanase. All right, let's see what else on the gram negative side we can screw with your head about. Gelatin. Everybody always gets gelatin wrong. In fact, you're doing it wrong in the classroom right now. <laughs> in the refrigerator, I found eight tubes last night of gelatin. It can't stay in there forever. If it's negative, you put it back in the incubator. If it sits in the refrigerator, it's never going to change. It's like taking a fat person and setting them in a bus. Are they going to get skinny? No. All right, the test is not going to change if you leave it in the refrigerator. Remember, it's got to cook. The bacteria has to eat. Bacteria don't do anything in the refrigerator, but wait. So on the gelatin test, it can be inoculated, and then it is incubated at optimum temperature for up to 21 days. And how do you read it? Each day you take it out and cool it. If while cool, it is liquid, then you have detected gelatinase and it is gelatin positive. If it is still in a gel, you put it back in the incubator until the next time you're in lab. You don't leave it in the refrigerator. Uh, how do I mess with people's mind? I say uh, the gelatinase was incubated for 16 days. When taken from the incubator, it was liquid. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't tell you anything. It has to be liquid while cool. On which test? The gelatin, and then I know it goes 21 days. Like, where within that would it be considered moderate? Okay, so.
All right, so this is the day you incubate, uh, you inoculate it. So if you would read it every other day, so you read it here, and if it's liquid, it would be a fast positive. You read it here, and it, it was gelled here, and it, it turned liquid here when cold, it would be a moderately fast positive. If you checked it at day seven, and it was not liquid, but it is liquid now when cool, it would be a slow positive. Then at day nine, it would be a very slow positive. This would be a very, very, this would be a very, very, very slow positive. This would be very, 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 very slow positive. This would be one, two, three, four, five berries. This would be six berries. And this one would be, if it was positive, it would be extremely slow. Positive or negative. So when you ask day four, <laughs> what is that? Day, day four, it was positive, yeah. and it's a fast. It's fast, okay. It isn't until day five that it becomes moderate. Okay. So it would be moderate here, moderate here, slow here, slow there. So up to a week. And if it was a week, it's a slow positive. If it's at eight days, it's still a slow positive, but at nine days, it's a very slow positive. Other questions uh, about gelatin? Oh, how do I disguise it? The test made from cow hooves or cow horns. Or fingernails. Any more questions about gelatin? Okay, let's see on the gram negatives what we've not covered. We've done blue, we did casing, we did gelatin. We'll talk about pigments last. Don't let me forget. Remember, I have short term memory damage. We talked about tindal. We talked about, by the way, mannitol auger and mannitol broth are two different things. So when we say mannitol fermented, we're talking about the uh, broth. Methyl red we haven't talked about yet. Capsule we haven't talked about yet. And motility. All right, so the topics we need to cover last. We need to cover methyl red broth. We need to cover motility. What was the other one? Pigments. Pigments. Anything else? Let me just double check. Ah, capsules. All right, so let's talk about MR broth. How do I hide methyl red broth? Remember, if it's methyl red broth, yellow is negative. It's the only fermentation test where yellow is negative. Red or orange is positive. It tests for mixed acid fermentation pathway. So how do I hide it? I say the test where we took two.
or the test where one broth was incubated seven days and the other one 21. So that's how I disguise it. Uh, and I say, uh, lots of times I say the methyl red broth after incubation was brown. Who cares? I didn't add the reagent. So remember, it has to have the reagent added to it, mixed, and it has to be red or orange to be positive. If it remains yellow or brown, it's negative. So methyl red also is in MVIC. So it's the third character in MVIC. What's the little I in MVIC mean? Nothing. It just means that you don't speak Arabic, Russian, or Armenian, and don't know how to pronounce pronounce 22 consonants together without a vowel. So you know how, so you should be fine. Does Hebrew have vowels? Yes. Oh, so you can't tell. It's like Arabic, you can't tell with all those squiggles. I'm just laughing. Guys. All right. Uh, let's look at the Vogue's Proskauer VP test. Remember, I often disguise it because by calling it acetoin. It is the 2,3-butadiol path, fermentation pathway. But remember, you can't detect 2,3-butadiol. We only have a chemical detection of the second to last step, which is acetoin. Uh, and usually this is enterobacter because this is how we use to dis distinguish E. coli from things that look like E. coli. We use the MVIC and BP is the biggest part of the MVIC. Um, Barrett's reagent. If I say Barrett's reagents were added to this broth, that means it's a VP. Or the reagent that is KOH. That's a Barrett's reagent. I think it's B. Sulfonylic acid is one and KOH. Potassium hydroxide is the second one. Remember it has to turn red. And how do I fake you out on that. I said it was incubated for 10 days, reagents were added, and it remained brown overnight and had a wisp of pink the next day. So that's positive. If I say immediately turn red, then it is positive. If I said remain brown, it's negative for VP. Any questions about MR or VP? I can also disguise these by saying the two broths that are used to detect a fermentation path, two fermentation pathways. So remember, these are broths that detect fermentation pathways. After we put the VP over nine and we don't, we, that's when we read it, right? We don't leave it there for... Months. You can leave it for days. The red won't disappear. That's a good question because on the phenol red broths, if you read them after seven days, they revert. 